move on to do a full Premier League week one preview. Obviously, um, we're all excited for the Premier League. Um, we got a little glimpse of that today with United taking on Fulham. But now, you know, we get the big array of games. And we start off with Ipswich Town getting to play their first Premier League game in 21 years. Taking on a team like Liverpool, who, you know, that's a good test for them. Opening up their, uh, opening up their season, opening up their Premier League campaign, getting to play a team like um, Liverpool. Uh, that's going to be fantastic. The game will be at Portman Road, which you know will add that it's going to be an electric atmosphere. It'll be a you know it'll be a twelve thirty kickoff, which is not great, but it'll be an electric atmosphere. Um, Arne Slot, we get a first look at Arne Slot. There's some um, there's some public optimism regarding Barcelona. So I'm um, regarding Barcelona regarding Liverpool in terms of their chances to potentially even compete in a title race and definitely make top four. For me. A successful season for Liverpool would be top four. And the fact that it's going to be a transition, transitioning from a manager as brilliant as Jurgen Klopp to a manager like Arne Slot, it'll be interesting. I'm also interested to see what front three does he go with. There's a lot of players that Liverpool could play. When you look at Luis Diaz, Diego Jota, Darwin Nunez, Mohamed Salah, um, there's some brilliant, brilliant players to choose from. In that front three, you got five, six players that threaten to get a starting position. Who does he roll out with in the first opening day? Who is his mainstay? Who are the players that he trusts? Who are the players that he trusts to get him the results in the early games? Um, and Liverpool, is they need to build some sort of momentum in this game and the next game. Because you know who they take on their third game of the season? They got that rivalry. They got the biggest rivalry probably in the Premier League. Manchester, not the biggest rivalry in the Premier League. I think even Liverpool-Everton is probably a bigger rivalry when it comes to mutual hate. But one of the biggest rivalries in the Premier League... Manchester United taking on Liverpool. So a big game coming up for Liverpool in Ipswich Town, you know. You know, in these sort of you know, when you're a team that's gonna be potentially battling for relegation, um staying trying to stay up, um, to stay in the league, um, you know, you wanna take care of your home games, you wanna get three points as much in your home games, and if you're going up against the better oppositions, you wanna aim for at least a point. And here I think if they can get the point to start off their campaign, brilliant for them. Arsenal take on Wolves. This is their first day in terms of first game for Arsenal in terms of, um, you know, the next battle, the next fight to stay in the, prim, uh, to stay in the, you know, not to stay, but to win the Premier League title. They're trying to fight off this beast in Manchester City. And, you know, they take on Wolves. These games early on in the season, they can come back to bite you. It's every game is crucial, you know, in the Premier League, in the title race. When you're competing with a team like Manchester City, we remember last year early on, Arsenal had a few nicks here and there that ended up biting them right at the end. So it's, in, it's important for Arsenal to take care of these games. They'll be playing Wolves at home. Um, we're going to get the first look at Calafiori in the Premier League. So important for them. We're going to see high-flying football. We're going to see a great atmosphere from Emirates. We're going to see great sort of style of play. Arsenal really going to be going at it, really going to be showing their ability, really going to be showing their creativity. So I'm excited for that game, of course. Everton take on Brighton. Um, and this is a team. Brighton had a little bit of a disappointing season last season. Um, and Roberto Di Zerbi, he is gone, and now Brighton are going to be managed by Fabian Horzeller, who, you know, is a little bit unknown, actually, Fabian Horzeller. Very, very unknown um, manager. He's 31 years old. 31 years old. Um, uh, and he's going to be the manager. He was the manager at uh, FC St. Pauli um, in... Uh, in uh, the second Bundesliga, so not real much experience there in terms of at top flight, and ter actually no experience in terms of top flight football. Um, fun fact: He was actually born in the um, in the U.S. He was born in Houston, Texas. Um, so um, yeah, he's the youngest head coach, the permanent head coach in Premier League history. Uh, so. Yeah, you know, 
I really don't uh, I really don't know much about him, so I'm interested to see what you know what he implements at Brighton, and they'll be taking on an Everton team that I think was a little bit better than years past. The team in Everton this season, I think that they'll finally be able to get out of the relegation race. I liked what they've done in this summer terms of the transfer window um this is going to be their final season at goodison they open up their season at goodison park last opening day game at goodison um ever so yeah we'll see uh that's going to be a good game newcastle take on southampton newly promoted southampton southampton could be battling to stay up um this season um first look at them at the premier league this season newcastle um you know Last year, disappointing season, but they had to, you know, they suffered a lot of injuries and they had Champions League football to worry about. Now it's a little bit different this season. I think Eddie Howe wants to get back to the magic that he had early on, uh, um, la not last year, but the year before. Um, manager that can really get his players playing better than the sum of their parts. They played this game at St. James Park. I expect an electric atmosphere, high-flying atmosphere, hungry atmosphere. And I think Newcastle, because of that atmosphere, we saw last year, despite that they got outplayed by Aston Villa at times, the opening day atmosphere took them home. I think it'll be the same in this game. I think they will trounce Southampton. Nottingham Forest take on Bournemouth. I think this is the year that Nottingham Forest might just get it. Get might just go down. They've been surviving. They've been surviving. They've been surviving. They've looked uninspiring under Nuno and Spirito Santos. Bournemouth had a really successful season last season, but have lost Dominic Solanke. We'll see how they're able to transition past not having Dominic Solanke. Um, so yeah, Aston Villa they open up their campaign in their first season after reaching the top four with uh, Unai Emery. They take on West Ham, a new look West Ham that will be managed, um, that will be managed by uh, uh, Julian Lopetegui after uh, um, after uh, David Moyes uh, was sacked. So I'm gonna be very interested to see how Julian Lopetegui how um, he opens up his campaign as West Ham manager and then Aston Villa they're going on the road to West Ham they're the, they're going to be the, they're going to be the favorite they're going to be expected to win this game just because of the nature of Aston Villa um you know how good they've been but they have a little bit of you know difficulty they need to transition back they lost Douglas Luiz which is a very you know big player for them so yeah we'll get to see i think this was a very tight game one of the tighter games this weekend Brentford take on Crystal Palace uh, Brentford, they might find themselves a little bit in a relegation battle this season. I think Crystal Palace, um, uh, you know, they're always they're going to be floating in that mid in mid table sort of position as they always are. Um, so uh, that's going to be a decent game. Uh, I'll wait. I'll hold this one for the last week. It's the best game of the weekend. But Leicester or should be the best game of the weekend. Leicester City taking on Tottenham. Tottenham, they want to open up their season very, very good. They, you know, they, they're trying to make that push into the top four under Ange Postecoglou. They're going to be without Vespasuma, but I don't think that's going to be the biggest loss in terms of one week. So don't think that'll affect it that much. Leicester City, um, they're opening up their campaign now with a new manager in Steve Cooper, who's going to be a little bit more pragmatic as opposed to Enzo Maresca. A little bit more pragmatic, a little bit more, you know, safe. And I think that might be the better option for them in terms of being able to stay up in this sort of race. I think Leicester City, they do have the belief in terms of they belong in the Premier League, which I think will will be a factor in terms of staying up compared to a team like Ipswich Town that hasn't really been in this sort of moments for a while. Um, so yeah, well, that would be fant fantastic to watch. First King uh, Premier League game in King's Power Stadium in over a year. So I expect a great atmosphere there. Um, and then Chelsea take on Manchester City. Um, will be game played at Stamford Bridge. You know, obviously Manchester City are massive, massive favorites just because of the horrible form Chelsea are coming in from. And Chelsea, they've given up a lot of poor, poor, poor goals in terms of trying to play out and trying to adapt to Enzo Maresca's system. I don't think Enzo Maresca is going to suddenly play a different system opening day just because he's playing Manchester City. I think he's going to continue. And if they suffer a 4-5-6-0 defeat, we're going to suffer a 4-5-6-0 defeat. And I think something bad is coming to Chelsea for this opening day weekend. Um, that's just the truth. But yes, that's our full Premier League Week 1 preview. 